Mm. Okay, so the MC608A has a 4 to 20 milliamp output, which is the instantaneous flow rate. It has a pulse output, which is represented by the total flow. It has an alarm contact output, and it has a Modbus RS485 communication output as well. All is standard and are all configurable. So firstly, we're going to talk about the 4 to 20 milliamp output and how that's configured. Now, the 4 milliamps is always represented as zero flow. But the 20 milliamp output is configurable very simply, and I'll run through how that's achieved. So we'll just press the menu to go to the main menu there. Again, options, we'll select the first one there. Options, we'll scroll all the way down to full scale flow rate. Press OK. And so what is represented there is 78.5 litres a second. Now this is on a four inch meter. So it's the max, always defaults as the maximum capacity of that meter. So 78.5 in nearly all applications is going to well exceed what you would expect to put through the meter. So I always recommend for people to put a flow rate that's realistic to their maximum flow rate. And that way you're getting the best resolution out of your four to 20 milliamps rather than using a very minor part of your range. So what we'll do is we'll explain how we, that could be changed because um, it is quite simple, but people who haven't used it before, it, it, uh, they can uh, take a little while to get their heads around it. So here we see in the top line, FS, that's the full scale flow rate figure, it's set to 78.5 litres a second as mentioned. Now the bottom line there is how much you change the top line by. Okay, so here we've got a hundred. So we press the positive, we change it to 178.5 minus back to 78.5. Now if we press the plus slash minus button, we can change that figure. If we keep pushing, it will toggle all the way around again. So here we've got 0 0.1. Again, that's how much we're going to change what our actual value is by. So let's press the minus. Now we've got 78.0. If we press that one more time, 1.0. Now we might increase that to 80. Press it to 10. Now we can change it by lots of 10. We'll bring it down to something like, say, 20 litres a second. So that's what we expect to, as our maximum flow rate for a four inch line, or sorry, 20, there we go. Press OK, and it's that simple. Now we've set up our four to 20 milliamps to be zero to 20 litres a second. And that's all that's involved. Next, we'll talk about the pulse output and how that's configured. So again, we're gonna navigate through the menu and show you how that's accomplished. Um, firstly, again, we'll go to the main menu. This time we're gonna go down to IO, inputs and outputs. We'll press OK, then we've got Pulse Out. And it'll ask you for a password. You just enter your, the, part, the correct password for that level, level one. Now we'll go to Pulse Quantity. So we'll press OK there and we'll just explain what, this, what we're seeing here. So on the four inch line, we've got a default of 10, and that's a litre. That's a little L there for 10 litres. So every 10 litres that goes through the metre, it will give a pulse output to your diagnostics or control equipment. So this again can be changed. We press the plus slash minus button and we might want to increase that to 100 say. Then simply once we've changed that to 10, every time we move in this, we're changing it by lots of 10. So we're now changing that to 100 litres and then we press OK. So another parameter that we just need to be mindful of is the pulse T on, which is essentially the pulse width. So when we go down there and select that, we can see that's set up for 100 milliseconds. Now, that's a, uh, a pulse width we've chosen because it's accepted by nearly all irrigation controllers, general controllers, PLCs, BMSs, all accept a pulse width of 100. Depending on the piece of equipment, if you reduce that too low, you may not see that pulse. So just be mindful of that. Um, we have an occasion when, when people have not been able to see the pulse and it's because someone's played with this parameter. But leaving it at 100 milliseconds, you should be fine. Okay, so what we'll talk about now, so we've set that up, uh, the, our pulse output for our totalizer. Now say we want to have an alarm contact to warn us that something's going on. That pulse contact could go to anywhere. It could go to a, an RTU that would have a text on your phone that something's wrong with your meter. 
it's, it's completely up to you, but there is, a, there is an alarm contact, and here they call it a prog out, program out is the alarm contact parameter. So again under IO, program out, we press OK, and the default is disabled. But we can enable that for a multiple number of parameters depending on what we're trying to achieve. So here, we can have it for reverse flow. Say you want to be alerted that you should never have reverse flow. If you have a reverse flow, you've got something wrong with your system, you want to be warned of that. It has a maximum flow, which is configurable. You can, you can set it up for a certain value that you want it to, to be alarmed. If it goes above a flow rate, a minimum flow, which is obviously the opposite, if it goes below a certain flow rate. Uh, or, or you can set up both conditions. If either happens, it has that alarm contact. Next one is a batching functionality that it has for the output. Also, excitation failure, which we showed before, is this, if it has a self-health check and there's something critically wrong with the sensor or converter, it will come up with that alarm. Or we can have um, empty pipe. If you have air in your line, you want to be warned about that. Again, it can give a contact closure there. Or you can have it all alarms. So you want to be alerted that there is a fault. You can always go to the meter, see what the fault was, even if it's cleared, we can pull that up. And again, we can go through the dialogue and pull out when the alarm happened for how long. So this is a feature that may be of, of great benefit to you being able to uh, be alerted of problems with the system. Okay, so we might just leave that as all alarms. Okay, so we're, now we've set our four to 20, we've set our pulse output and our alarms. So lastly, what we'll just touch on is the Modbus RS485 communication. So there's not too much really to change there. It's pretty straightforward. If you go to our website, burmad.com.au, you'll be able to see all our holding registers for our Modbus communications. But if we go down to others, communications, we can see the way we can change our board rate of our Modbus to whatever you like. And we can also, going down to communications, we can also add the Modbus address. So of course, this could be daisy chain. You might be reading this meter along with other multiple, uh, other Modbus devices. So you can assign its own drop, drop number there. Okay, so we covered all the outputs of the MC608 powered converter. Now, if you need any additional information, such as wiring, uh, technical information on the programming, please visit our burmad.com.au website or contact one of our staff. Thanks for watching, and next we'll talk about troubleshooting on the MC608A.